In this video, I'm going to be talking all about how to identify problems with your lawn. So let's get out of the weeds. So before I get started today, I want to take a moment just to thank those of you who have been uh, commenting and subscribing and liking uh, my videos. Um, I really do appreciate it as it does help me uh, grow this channel. So since I have so many uh, people that are new viewers to this channel, I want to just take a moment to talk about why I do this channel and what you can expect with this channel going forward. Me and my wife bought our first house um, almost five years ago and I knew nothing about the lawn. And whenever the springtime came around, I had no idea what I was doing. I wasn't really doing anything. I was just mowing when I had to. Didn't care about grass at all. And I noticed as the summer got along and we started uh, getting higher temperatures, my lawn started going brown. And then I look across the street and I have a neighbor who just has this beautiful lush lawn. And I just thought, man, I, I need to figure out how to keep my lawn nice. Because the one thing we had in our lawn that was a benefit I knew is that we had an in-ground irrigation system. And so I knew, I was like, I have the in-ground irrigation so I can give my lawn water, but I need to know how to take care of this. And so I started really uh, learning and diving deep into lawn care. So this channel is dedicated to those of you who are looking out and have no idea what you're looking at in your lawn. And so I want to keep every video I do uh, with the beginner in mind. And so, and so I want to make what might seem complicated, I want to simplify that to easy to understand so that you can develop a lawn care program for yourself that's easy to maintain and also gives you the most beautiful yard in your neighborhood. If you follow along each week, I'm going to be just typically talking about what I'm seeing in the lawn, what I'm doing to my lawn, so that you can kind of just follow along step by step with what I'm doing. I'm going to stick with readily available products that anybody watching this video can just go to their store and pick up and use on their lawn. Today I'm going to be talking about typical problems you're going to start seeing in your lawn and how to start identifying what's going on with issues in your lawn. And so as I'm out here just looking around on my lawn, it's been about five or six weeks since I've put down my first application of fertilizer. So it's about that time again. And so before I get started with anything else, I'm gonna fertilize my lawn. I've already fertilized once this year. And so now it's been about five or six weeks and it's time to fertilize again. If you don't know how to fertilize a lawn, reference the video I did a few weeks ago all about just fertilizing your lawn and how to actually do it. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys what I'm going to be putting on my lawn today. This is a Jonathan Green uh, Green Up. So it's just their lawn food typical uh, fertilizer. And so this is one that I've never actually used before. And so I, I saw it in the store today and thought, hey, let's just give it a try. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be putting down on my lawn today. If you haven't fertilized at all yet this season, now is the perfect time to get started. If you have already fertilized once this year, make sure you're waiting between four to six weeks before fertilizing again if you're wanting to do that. Um, but if you haven't at all yet, it's definitely a good time to get started. Our, our cool season grass is doing really well right now, and so now you wanna feed your lawn uh, to keep it going strong. today is I want you to learn how to walk in your grass and identify issues and problems that you have going on with your lawn. And so for some of you, you might not even necessarily know what type of grass you have out in your yard. So when you're walking through your lawn, you're probably seeing more than just one grass type. For most of us with cool season grass, we will have a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass, perennial rye, fine fescues, and tall fescues all mixed into our lawn. Some of you may have sod, so if you've moved into like a new build, they'll get sod. So for the most part, that might be just a uniform grass. You might just be all Kentucky bluegrass. But for those of us who have maybe an older home or those that you've moved into a new home, chances are you just have a wide variety of grasses out in your yard. And so a few weeks ago, I did a video all about uh, getting rid of some of the, the weeds you're gonna see in your yard in the spring. And so what I wanna talk about today is finding other issues with your lawn, finding grasses that you don't wanna be in your lawn that have made it there, 
maybe you see a brown spot in your lawn and identifying what the issue is. So it's very easy to be overwhelmed when you're first getting started by not having any idea what you're looking at. But just know that all of us have issues with our lawn. And so as beautiful as some of the pictures I post of my yard, my yard is nowhere near perfect. So as you're outside walking through your lawn, start to identify areas and issues that you might be having and try to learn what's going on. A perfect example of this right here. If you look in this area, which is in my front, front yard, up here in this corner, you can see some little areas of circular areas that are discolored. And so what you want to do is whenever you see something, get down a little bit closer and try to see what's actually going on. And so if you look down here in my lawn, you see this circular, this little circular patch here, and it's actually kind of a pinkish color. And so what this actually is, is this is actually a lawn disease. If you see real closely, you can almost see kind of this pinkish or red little thread looking types. And so this is just a disease that we can get in the our cool season grass in the spring or even in the fall and it'll discolor these spots. It's important when you see a brown spot to dive in a little bit deeper so that you can actually learn what it is and how to treat it. Most of your lawn diseases uh, will come by over fertilization or your lawn is stressed out and you don't want to add more fertilizer to it. But if you look in closer here like with red thread that I have here in my lawn, it's actually a lawn disease that is usually showing a nitrogen deficiency in your lawn. And so to actually help get the lawn recovered from this one, you actually want to uh, fertilize your lawn and that'll help the lawn to get rid of it. Also with red thread is it doesn't spread as easily as some of the other lawn diseases from mowing. So normally when you're mowing and everything, if you start to see discolored spots and it's disease, you can, if you're mulching your clippings, you can easily spread the disease all throughout your lawn. So anytime you have disease, for the most part, you want to bag your clippings so you don't spread it to the good grass. Another thing you might be seeing in your lawn is you see all of the little seed heads here. And so you could be looking out and you might be seeing a lot of these. And what you want to know with these is that there's really nothing wrong at all. It just means the grass is thriving. So when you start to see these little seed heads popping up in your lawn, for the most part, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong. A lot of times this is going to just start happening at this time of the year because the grass is really thriving. It's doing good. And so it wants to put its energy towards seeding. When you see that in your lawn, don't think that it's a bad thing. Uh, just know that your grass is doing good and you can just mow it just fine. There's nothing actually wrong with it. Um, and so usually around this time, you'll start to see uh, your grass trying to go to seed. So another issue that most of us will have in our cool season lawns is we will have tall fescue mixed in with our good grass. And so there's two types of tall fescues. There's just normal tall fescue and there's turf type tall fescue. If you look at your cool season grass, most of the good cool season grass is all a really thin grass blade. What they've done is tall fescue used to always just be really thick grass blades. And over the years, they've actually developed it to be what they call turf type tall fescue. So it's a lot thinner of a grass blade and it blends in well with your other turf. Well, most of us will still have patches in our lawn of actual just tall fescue, the old stuff that has the really thick blades. So if you're walking through your lawn and you start seeing grasses that have really thick blades, there's a really good chance that it's a tall fescue clump. Now tall fescue is used a lot of times uh, when you see like alongside the highways and that because it's a really low maintenance grass. And so if you're ever up close, any kind of side of the road and just kind of general like areas that aren't really well kept, a lot of the times they're going to be using just tall fescue so it's going to be a really thick grass blade but for our actual home lawns most of the grasses are going to be these thin bladed grasses and so anytime you guys have a tall fescue clump in your lawn it'll really stand out for me personally i have a ton of those clumps all throughout my grass so let me show you okay so here's a perfect example you see all the thin bladed grass and you're walking through your lawn you're moving around moving around and next thing you come you and next thing you know, you come across an area and patch of really thick bladed grass. And so now let me pluck a piece of this here. And so you can see, look how thick that grass blade is compared to all of the thin bladed around it. 
And so it blends in okay when you're from a distance, but as you're walking through your grass, mowing it or whatever, you'll really, these things will really stand out to you. And so for my lawn, you can see here, I have a ton of these different patches here. You can just find these spots with really thick blades of grass. And so a lot of this is just the tall fescue clumps growing in my lawn. So the question would be then, how do I get rid of it? And the problem with tall fescue clumps is that there's really no good way of getting rid of them unless you dig them out. And so for me, I would literally be digging up probably a quarter of my yard if I wanted to get all of them out of my lawn. And so for me, it's just easier just to leave them in the lawn because they blend in and you can't really see them once it's mowed anyway. Really, the only thing that you can spray on them is actually like the glyphosate that's gonna also kill all the good grass in the area. And so if you really wanna take them out of your lawn, your probably best method is gonna to be to actually dig them up. Lastly, another area in my lawn here. Um, so don't mind all the gray stuff. That's the uh, Scott's Patch Master. So I was doing a little bit of seeding in this area. But you can see here, a light green grass that's kind of among the darker green grass and it's all gone to seed head. So you can see like none of the grass around it is that seed is gone to seed right now. But you can just look as soon as it's light green grass and seed heads. And so with this, this is actually going to be some annual bluegrass. And so it's not the good normal Kentucky bluegrass that we're, we like in our lawn. This is going to be, they call it poa annua, which is the more technical term for it. But it's annual bluegrass. This is another one that's a little bit more difficult to try to get rid of. Um, because most of your over-the-counter weed controls are not going to actually kill uh, this in your lawn. So if you look around in your lawn and you start to see like little circles of lighter green grass, there's a decent chance that it could be a different type of bluegrass, but just not the one that you really want in your lawn. And so it's probably nothing you've done to your lawn. It's just that you have uh, some of this different grass types in your lawn. And so as you begin to become more aware of what's in your lawn, as you're mowing it and fertilizing and taking care of it, uh, you're going to start noticing some of these other issues. So don't freak out about what you see. I remember my first time when I really started getting in the lawns, I'm looking out mowing my lawn and I'm sitting here seeing all these different things. It's like, what in the world is this thing? And so it's very easy to get overwhelmed sometimes, but just know that you can do a lot with the lawn that you have back there. Um, and so I know you'll see some people that they'll see problems in their lawn and they'll just want to burn the whole thing down and start from scratch. But I don't want you guys to have to do that. I want you guys to be able to work with what you guys have so that you can be successful in a way that fits your life. As always, anytime you see something in your lawn and you're not sure what it is, try to do a little bit of research. I always reference these turf grass extensions, but they're really, really helpful. So if you Google search a university turf grass extension in your area, they will have weed identification uh, charts so that they'll just show you perfect pictures of what these different grasses look like and you'll be able to identify uh, what you have going on in your lawn and then it will tell you the best way uh, to get rid of it. So get out in your lawn and start to learn to identify the issues that you're having. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment here and I will be sure to get back to you and help you the best that I can. And I'll see you guys next time when we get out of the weeds into a beautiful lawn.